Previously on the channel, I created a walkthrough covering the installation of the Evil M5 core developed by the other one. If you haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend doing so. Click on the link on the top right corner or find it in the description below to gain more context about it. Let's get back in business. Now I'm going to use the Flipper Zero with the Evil portal to set up the targeted access point. I've chosen a name for the network that's easily recognizable. This is to ensure we don't interfere with all the network around us. I've decided to use the built-in captive portal provided by the Xtreme firmware. I have my target access point up and running it's now time to use my famous client, the ThinkPad, connect to the access point and see if I'm able to access to this captive portal. Back on a PC, I open my favorite browser, Firefox. I also ensure I'm connected to the Evil portal. Now I could navigate to any website and each time I will be redirected to the Xtreme captive portal. Now I will enter login and password to test if they are correctly displayed on the Flipper Zero. Here is the first scenario in this series. I will start a network scan from the M5 and look for the Evil Portal SSID. Then I will select the SSID and clone it. It will take the same SSID and MAC address from the dev board. I will start the M5 captive portal. Now imagine our ThinkPad being out of range. A situation will simulate by shutting down the Evil Portal. The immediate outcome, our ThinkPad will reconnect to a different network, the one from the M5. Depending the level of sophistication of the installed Evil portal, the target could be tempted to enter the credentials. By clicking on Check Credential on the M5 screen, we could retrieve them or later we will see on the web portal how to do so. Another thing we can do on the screen is to delete all the credentials easily. Just click on delete all credentials and they are gone. Another cool feature is a monitor screen on the M5. It shows how many clients are connected right now. I have zero because I stopped the portal. It also shows how many passwords we got, the name of the access point and the page I'm using for the captive portal. If I click on the right button for more, I can see details about any connected clients. Also, it shows the remaining stack and RAM memory, battery status and the temperature sensor. The probe attack sends probe with random SSIDs of 32 characters and randomized MAC addresses. Along with a channel change, I use the Flipper Zero with my second dev board equipped with Marauder firmware to sniff the probes. This will be less efficient than the d but it's designed for people who want to play against each other with an evil M5. One person sniffs probe and the second one jeopardizes the attack. Maybe we will see competition at the next DEF cons, who knows? Probe sniffing means capturing network probes. We do this to reuse them later. For the karma attack, for instance, device sends probe request while trying to connect to Wi Fi networks. For this demo, I will use the ThinkPad along with the Evil portal on the Flipper Zero dev board. I will activate the portal and wait for the laptop to connect. As soon as it's connected, I will stop the portal. This will prompt the ThinkPad to start sending probe for this SSID. Like probe sniffing, the Karma attack listens for probes. When it captures one, you can press stop and then directly deploy your portal. It waits for 60 seconds to see if a client connects. If a client connects before the timer ends or if you press stop, the access point stays on. If no one connects, the attack turns off. Since the making of this video, the other one released a new version, 1.1.2, with an automated karma attack. This new version tries the first probe. It sees instead of waiting for you to do any manual action.
like I did. I will show you the web interface, which is password protected. By default, the password is set to the other one nickname, but you could change it. To do so, you need to edit the Eno file before flashing the M5 and change this attribute here, access web password. And here you could see I have changed it to some XP. We are now connected to the M5 SSID and instead of staying on a captive portal, you will type evil-m5-core2-menu and hit enter. Now it's time to put your password if you have changed it. And you could see all these different options. Credential will show you all the credential you have harvested with the captive portal. I have known because I have deleted them before. You could upload new file on the SD card. It's used to upload new captive portal, but I don't want to upload anything here. And keep in mind, the file you could upload are limited to two megabytes. After it's quite unstable if you want to upload bigger file. You could check the SD file by downloading anything that is already present on the micro SD. And you could also change the WPA password or set one for the M5 SSID. As the other one mentioned, it's a flipper friend, so they could communicate together. Right now, the flipper only listens. The M5 sends message via serial for debugging purpose. And you receive message when you navigate on the core too. You can use the serial application on the flipper to see this message. Somehow I had issue with the C port, also known as the UART, on my AWS edition. So I had to use the port on the back of the M5. Another way to access to the serial output is to use the serial connection straight from the USB. You can do so by using your favorite terminal and specifying the device. On Mac is different than what I'm used to seeing on Linux with TTY. I have this USB serial adapter with reference as you can see on the screen. Then I should not forget to specify the speed in bodes, which is here 115,200. Then I could browse the menu on the M5 and it will also be displayed on the terminal. 